In this video, it's the third annual Tabletop Minions Awards 2021. So it's near the end of the year again, and I've gone and figured out finally where I'd left my fancy tuxedo. Uh, spoiler, bottom of the drawer. Uh, and, uh, and, and here we are. We're going to uh, talk about the things that, um, that I found to be cool this year. This is, um, this is an award ceremony in that, you know, you know, nobody wins anything. There's no actual prizes. There's no cash or anything like that. Recognition, sure, there's that. Um, are the things things that necessarily came out in this year, 2021? No, not necessarily. Some of these things might have come out before, uh, and I just discovered them this year, and so they're new to me, let's just say that. And that's kind of the award ceremony in a nutshell, as we've done it now. This is the third year in a row, so if you want to check some of the other ones, you can hit this playlist. Pachow, and see some of the other winners and how they've been rocketed to stardom and all of that and whatnot. Why don't we get started? Remember, these are in no specific order, but this first one is something that actually I talked about a little bit uh, in a video earlier in the year. It is both an art style, as it has come to be, but it is also where it started from, for the most part, uh, from a game. And that's something called Turnip 28 by Max Fitzgerald. I'm nearly sure I got that right. And uh, it is a game that you can go and download for free. It is a miniatures game that takes place in an alternate world. It's, it's like our history, except that when Napoleon lost, uh, the next thousand years, so even technically further ahead than we are now, uh, the next thousand years, like nothing ever got better, uh, and this strange root sort of kind of grew throughout the world and choked out most of the food and then everybody had to eat the root because there's nothing else to eat and then they got all kind of weird mutated and it's a whole thing. So it's a, a painting and a modeling uh, kind of um, movement as I mentioned in that video, Pachow, uh, but also it is a game as well that you can download for free and it is a gorgeous game. It is layout that, that makes me very, very happy. It's so very nicely done. Um, the artwork is all spectacular. Um, but even beyond that, the game is also very smartly written. You can play it as either a rank and flank style game where you're moving your fig your figures around in uh, you know in, in rectangles or squares or whatever like that. But you can also, if you want to, play them separately. It's it's a it gives you a lot of things to make your own choices on, which is really cool. It still gives you actual answers, and it's not just one of those games that's like, hey, why don't you push some models around? But it's not strict. Let's just say that. Um, and it has a lot of really interesting uh, different types of units you can use. And there's also different types of factions if you want to get into that. But you can also just play kind of base game to start. It's all up to you. And talking about up to you, the modeling is up to you. There are, as of this recording, no actual models that you can buy or download STLs or things like that. Though, from what I can tell, that's coming. I've been seeing some amazing looking sculpts that are going to be coming soon uh, that uh, are being commissioned. Uh, by Max for uh, Turnip28, and the stuff that I've been seeing on Twitter has been amazing. So follow Max on Twitter, uh, but also check out the game. You can download it from their Patreon. You don't have to be a, a Patreon member to download it. It's a free download. It's just on their Patreon page. But if, you, if you're interested, I mean, I've been following them for a little while on Patreon and, and supporting, and I think it's a good idea. It's a really interesting game. I've bought a bunch of models, a bunch of Perry Napoleonics and things like that. In, in the new year, I'm going to start working on some pieces, kind of off stream and things like that, see where it goes. Um, but I've pushed around just some, you know, proxy models, just take a bunch of Skaven and say they're these guys and a bunch of these guys and say they're those guys. And I've messed around with the rule system and I like it. Um, so maybe you might as well. So take a look at Turnip 28 by Max Fitzgerald. This next one isn't necessarily a product, it's actually a company. It's kind of two parts of a company. The company is called Anvil Industry, and I've been buying resin bits from them. They're based out of the UK, but I've been buying resin bits for them for a couple of years now. Uh, I've done these cultists for Zona Alpha with them. I've done some other models here and there. I've got a lot more bits that I've purchased from them. 
that I'm going to be uh, building more stuff for Zona Alpha, a bunch of like private military contractor folks and like this and that. And they have a lot of different stuff from sci-fi to the kind of fantastical to like a little bit more kind of modern military or maybe modern military, but you can tweak it a little bit, which is, you know, the kind of thing that I also like to do. Their models are all done in resin and they're really, really nicely done. They're just, I've, I've bought stuff from other companies that are resin and I've had middling luck in many situations, but everything that I've gotten from Anvil Industry has been just kind of gorgeously modular. Things go together really well. You know, you've got a guy, you got a set of arms that have like a stock built in and then you can snap in any gun that's, you know, AK-47, uh, M4, uh, weird plasma rifle, like all kinds of things like that. Things are very modular, very easy to use, very easy to build, customizable. You can kind of move things around a little bit, turn heads, things like that, swap different heads. Um, it's one of my, my favorite bits companies out there. And they also have a digital half or portion, whatever you want to say to their business as well. So you, if you're a 3d printer, you can also buy a lot of really well done STLs from them as well and take those things and use them in your modeling, mix and match them with plastic parts from other companies, resin stuff, metal, whatever you want. Um, if you're interested in looking for bits for interesting things that aren't necessarily, there's some sci-fi in there certainly, but there's also some stuff that's maybe a little bit more subtle, a little bit more maybe modern age, definitely take a look at Anvil Industry UK. And now a game that's probably by the biggest company out of all of these lists. I have a tendency to, as you've known, skew a little indie. But this is from a company called Osprey Games, and it's called Stargrave. If you are familiar with their pretty massive hit, Frostgrave, which was fantasy... Um, if you like Mordheim, you probably will like Frostgrave, let's just say that. And if you like, let's say, Firefly and Mordheim and Frostgrave then Stargrave is what you're looking for. Stargrave is their newest game. It's science fiction based, but still based off of a lot of the same kind of ideas from, from Frostgrave, but taken and moved them into kind of a new area. Not just talking about like now it's sci-fi and stuff, but like the one thing that sort of bothered me a little bit about Frostgrave is once you had your wizard, who is the leader of your small little war band of treasure hunters, you then had an apprentice and your apprentice was just like a mini me of your uh, your, you know, your, your, your wizard. So it, it was basically just a backup, an understudies for when your wizard would eventually die. Now you have a new wizard who's there and they were always the same, whatever kind of, um, you know, uh, faction or, or whatever, whatever kind of, you know, type of magic that this, you know, your wizard used. Then so did your, your apprentice for the most part. And Stargrave amongst a bunch of other things has also changed that. So your captain and your first mate can be completely different archetypes. They can be completely different things altogether. And they give you a lot of really interesting archetypes to, to work from. And you are not building a war band or treasure hunt or something like that. You're building a crew. You have a spaceship crew. Again, if you've ever watched uh, Firefly, you, you kind of got the idea. Um, but the reason it's called Stargrave is because it's kind of post-apocalyptic sci-fi. There was a giant, great galactic war and everybody lost and it's over. And now if anyone tries to scratch together even a little bit of a hint of a government, warlords and pirates come along and just snuff that all out. So everything's in pretty bad shape and you're just trying to scratch by and get through. And so it can be played obviously as a, uh, you know, a, like a competitive style game, not like, tr you know, tournaments or stuff, but like adversarial. You can play against your friends, but you can also play as a big campaign as well, not just a one-off. And uh, I believe there's even some stuff in there for like solo things. I've been basically playing against myself a little bit in testing and, and trying out and seeing how I, how I like the changes they've made. And, and I, I like them. They've also released a Quarantine 37, which is the first expansion for it, which has got a bunch of cool space zombie stuff going on and things like that. So if you were always like, yeah, I hear about Frostgrave all the time, but I'm just not into fantasy that much, or I'm just, yeah, something about it, take a look at Stargrave. We've got another company here, uh, well, really a website, uh, frankly, um, My Mini Factory, which is uh, strangely enough at myminifactory.com. They are pretty much, in my opinion, the go-to place if you are looking for cool miniature STLs to print out of your resin printer, uh, filament printer, whatever kind of 3D printer you've got. Literally just, it's a search engine, you type stuff in, you find things, you buy what you want, and you get it, and 
there are so many like I've been talking about how the the Patreon thing has really taken off amongst 3D sculptors because now they can work for the people who like their actual stuff. Those people support them through Patreon and then they just crank stuff out month after month after month and it goes out to these folks and it's great. Well, number one, uh, my mini factory has built their own version of Patreon now just for those sculptors. Patreon's designed for anybody to use, but that means that some of the features are not necessarily great for some different subsets of the different audience that they may actually currently work with. You know, I use Patreon and it works fine for me, but I don't have to try to send out STLs to my supporters every month and go through all that kind of stuff. My mini factory now has something called Tribes, which allows you to basically follow the sculptor you like through Tribes, automatically get the stuff sent to you, you know, all this stuff. You get, it, 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 it smooths out and streamlines everything, but if you're not necessarily interested in all the stuff, that some sort of sculptor puts out and you're just looking for just that one thing that you saw on that one tweet someplace or whatever that you just thought was cool, my mini factory has got your a la carte needs covered and you can go through all of that kind of stuff. Plus they also do their own crowdfunding, uh, you know, and that kind of stuff. Every kind of different thing that sculptors have been trying to figure out, you know, problems to solve amongst how they get their business done, in my opinion, my mini factory has picked up the ball on every single one of those. And so if you're interested in supporting a sculptor and going through that kind of stuff, check to see if they're my mini factory. Or if you're just like, I really need a like zombie astronaut, where, 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 just, just type zombie astronaut into the search bar thing over at my mini factory, and that's where you'll find them. And uh, then you, know, you can go on your, with the rest of your day. Over towards the later part of this year, 2021, the folks over at the Army Painter over there in, in Denmark uh, produced a new line of paints that are designed for airbrush. Now, there are lots of companies out there who make stuff for airbrush, and that's fine, but they did something that I really liked a lot, and that is they designed them in triads. Now, if you're familiar with Reaper paints, Reaper's been doing kind of triad things for a while. What triad is is that they will make a color and they'll make a base color, like a mid-tone color. Maybe the base color is maybe more of like a, a darker version of the color. A mid-tone color and a light color, a highlight color. So when you are looking at a color normally and you're like, how do I highlight this? Sure, you can add white to it to try to make a highlight version, but sometimes that doesn't work great. Like, you know, adding white to red kind of makes pink, which is not necessarily a highlight, that kind of stuff. Um, but also, if you're just not interested in mixing, especially when you're working with an airbrush, it's hard to mix paints and then get them into the airbrush. It's not hard to do on your wet palette. It's a little bit more of a pain in the butt, um, you know, to do into the little cup on the top of your airbrush. If you're like me and lazy, then, and also like paint that doesn't clog your airbrush, I would definitely take a look at the Army Painter airbrush uh, paints. The air paints have been working great for me. I've been using them on a lot of the Car Wars models that I've been painting lately. I've been using them on all the stuff I've been doing for Warcry recently, and having that ability to have, um, you know, like, oh, I'm going to use this mid color and then highlight with the light, or, and this is what I did rec recently with my Osiarch Bone Reapers that I'm working on for Warcry, I primed them real dark, and then I sprayed the dark bone color on them, like a Xenothal. Then I sprayed a highlight Xenothal just on the top parts with the mid color, and then later on, when I brought out my brush, actually my dry brush, I used the highlight color and did the dry brush over everything after I'd already thrown a wash of sepia over the top of them. And then that just kind of helped drink, bring everything out, bring out the detail. And you know because they're triads, the hue is matched in those three colors. Sometimes you'll grab a dark blue and a light blue, and sure, their values are maybe right, but maybe their type of blue is not the same. That's called hue. So if the hue is matched across all three of those paints, it's actually really, really helpful and just speeds things along when you're looking to highlight and to shade and this and that kind of stuff, especially when you're using the airbrush. So if you get the chance, go out there and take a look at the Army Painter's new line of airbrush paints. I think I've talked about this game enough on the channel this year that it has uh, become a square on the uh, Tabletop Minions bingo card. Um, and that is a, a little game that I really enjoy called Space Weirdos by Garski Games. Space Weirdos... Uh, what can I say? Number one, the first thing that drew me to it was the cover. I just, I think the cover art is great. It's all in black and white. It is a 16 page PDF, which is very small. It is also physically very small. It is formatted so that it is, it takes up a half of an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Now, as soon as I saw that, my first thought was, I bet this is formatted to be made into like a little zine, like a little five and a half by eight and a half little digest kind of ash can type of zine. And as it turns out, I was right. So because I'm that kind of nerd, 
uh, I bought the PDF and then I printed mine own out because my printer, if you push the right buttons, it'll double side stuff and all that jazz. And I stapled it and now I have this great little booklet and I can use that. But it's still, it's a PDF and it works great as a PDF. And it's a game of sci-fi skirmish combat and it is no frills. It is simple yet elegant. Um, you're building your own uh, figures. It's not one of those games where you're like, okay, I have the rules, but now I have to go get the army lists from someplace else. It's not like that. It's designed so that you maybe have some models and you have a points value that you and your opponent have decided on. 75 points, 125 points are two different levels that are listed in the book. And then you just build based off of what your model has. If your model's got like a gun and a cool knife, well, then you can kind of do that. There's psychic powers you can put in there, but not too many. There's weapons that you can put in there, but not too many. It's not one of those games that gives you so many different possibilities and so many different options that you don't know what to do with it. It's one of those games instead where it's designed so that you can tell the story that you want to do and have fun with it. And, and go from there. And it's also like five bucks and it, it, it's real, real, real thin. It is not designed necessarily. There's no big, you know, huge campaign kind of, uh, you know, a part in the book because the, again, the book is 16 pages and that includes the cover, which, you know, but so, uh, if you want to go into like doing a huge campaign or something like that, you may have to kind of, uh, get your, uh, game designer hat on there and do a little bit of that. But if you just want to have fun little games and make up neat little lists, for weird space weirdo type creatures and monsters and space people that you might have laying around and have some fun games. I've, I've been really having a blast with it and uh, I'm, I'm looking to do some battle reports here on the channel in 2022 with it. So you'll be seeing some of that hopefully soon as well. Space Weirdos, Garski Games, um, definitely check it out. I almost never uh, buy resin bases where they're like, you know, like a molded thing and you just buy them in a package and then you stick your thing on there and paint them all that kind of stuff. I have in the past a couple of times, but I haven't in a long time because I really enjoy building bases. I really enjoy making bases that, uh, that work well with the models that I'm using. And I don't want them to take away too much from the model. I want the model to be, you know, the, the main thing. Um, and I've obviously done a lot of work with figuring out how to best texture the bases to look the way that I want them to look. If I'm trying to do sand or ash, I still generally use something, uh, I, I talked about this in a video quite some time ago, where I took CA glue and baking soda and you sprinkle it on top of the CA glue and all that stuff. And then it's a very super fine covering and all that kind of stuff. But ciao, you should check that out. But there are times when you just want to go a little quicker and you're also looking for something that's a little bit more coarse than that, but not too crazy coarse, not as coarse as sand or anything like that. And uh, my friends over at Monument Hobbies have produced this new stuff called fine basing texture or fine basing paste. Off the top of my head, I, and I didn't write it down specifically the name, but it comes in a little... Uh, va uh, uh, tub and it is uh, kind of a, a medium sort of gray, a little bit darker gray color. And it's, it's just the perfect type of texture for the stuff that I've been doing lately, specifically Warcry and a lot of things like that. But it just goes on so easily. I've worked with plenty of other um, basing textures out there. I'm familiar with like, you know, Vallejo's stuff. They've got basing textures that come in big tubs. Um, Games Workshop has got basing textures that come in tiny little, you know, pots and cost like, you, you know, eight bucks or whatever nearly. Um, but the problem is with most of those, specifically the Games Workshop one, because I used to use Armageddon Dust all the time. That was always my go-to for, you know, up until I discovered this stuff. Um, when you put it on a brush or a little spatula or anything, it just becomes a ball on the end of, and you're trying to push it down onto the base and it will just instead stick to the ball. And it's just really hard to work with. And I just like, you know, this is this gives me the look I'm looking for. But it's sort of a pain in the butt to work with. And when I first picked up uh, a, a tub of this stuff from Monument, the Pro Acryl, uh, it just it it goes on like paint, but it's got a whole bunch of texture in it. But it's so easy just to put on. I just use an old synthetic brush and just brush it on like it's normal paint, and I can still shove it where I want to and scooch it in, you know, between the feet and do all these things. And then I can make a big clump of it if I want to or whatever. And when it dries, it just it just makes this texture that is just it's like I said, literally everything I've been doing lately, specifically for for Warcry, because I want all my bases to look the same amongst all my different Warcry bands. That's the texture I've been using, and it's been working great. So if you're interested, they also have a coarse version now too, which I haven't tried. I gotta be honest, depending on how coarse the coarse version is in comparison to the fine version, I could see the coarse be something that you use more on 
maybe like uh, terrain or things like that. But I don't know. Like this stuff is perfect for basing. I think if it was much more coarse, I'm not sure if I would be. But again, like I said, I haven't tried it yet. This stuff impresses me so much. It's easy to use. It's great. Um, it only comes in gray because it's not really designed for the last step generally. It's designed you put it down and you prime over it and work, you know, from there. Like, you know, like that's the way that I generally do my bases. I don't put the texture on at the end. I put the texture on at the beginning before I prime. I just think it works better. Made a video about that too. But ciao. So if you're interested, definitely check this stuff out. Pro Acryl, fine basing texture for Monument Hobbies. I am a big, big, big fan and I'm probably going to have to buy another tub pretty soon. So there we are. That's the 2021 Tabletop Minions Awards. Congratulations to all of the winners, which is to say people that I picked and put in my list. There's not really a, again, there's no trophy coming. Don't, 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 don't keep an eye out in the mailbox. It's not, it, but nonetheless, uh, I, these are all things, like I said, that I really enjoyed. Um, I enjoyed using them. I enjoyed kind of discovering them. I'm not saying I discovered them. I'm saying I, you know, for myself, discovered. You, you get what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, I, I hope that if you get the chance, you can take a look at these things. The descriptions are down in the, you know, thingy, whatever. The links are in the description below. And you can check them out there. And uh, maybe give them a try. See what you think. The, the games, the different materials, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. It, this whole entire hobby is not just like one or two big companies, even though they do take a lion's share of everything. There's a lot of small folks in this hobby that really make it, at least for me, the hobby that I love. So if you've got maybe something, we'll call them a runner up. How about that? If you've got some sort of kind of more indie type thing that you think people should check out uh, that I didn't talk about particularly in this awards, maybe stick it in the comments below. And um, you know, see what the, maybe, maybe somebody else will then read that. Cause if you're looking for something new, check the, the comments below and, and you'll maybe find something that is a new technique, a new paint, a new type of model, a new type of game that really uh, is something that in, it helps your enjoyment of the hobby, even a little, even a little bit more in 2022, hopefully. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you who watch and comment and share links and like, and subscribe and all of those different things. Um, I'd be here just talking to this camera and there'd be nobody on the other side if it wasn't for people like you who come and watch and, uh, and support. And I appreciate that very much. So, uh, again, I hope you had a good, or at least as good as you could 2021. I definitely, absolutely wish all of you to have a better 2022 than you did this year. And, um, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.